Over the past few years, India has been looking to change course from being one of the world's largest importers of military equipment to achieving strategic independence through local manufacturing and procurement. One of the flagship projects in this regard has been the Light Combat Aircraft Tejas Fighter Program. Now, media coverage of the Tejas development has been poor. So in this video, we will debunk inaccurate information by comparing the Tejas Mark I to the Gripen CD and the F-16IN. And so the first fallacy. Its combat endurance is not even an hour, compared to 3 hours for the Gripen and 4 hours for the F-16. The endurance of an aircraft is determined by four primary factors. The fuel fraction, the lift to drag ratio, the specific fuel consumption of the engine, and the mission profile. The fuel fraction is simply the fraction of the aircraft's weight covered by fuel. It's a key measure of endurance because it nullifies the effect of the particular size of the aircraft being compared. Higher the fuel fra fraction, better the endurance. The fuel fractions of the Gripen, CD, the F-16 and Tejas under various internal and external fuel tank conditions are covered in the table. As we can see, they are quite close to each other in terms of magnitude. Next comes the specific fuel, fuel consumption of the engine. The Tejas and the Gripen CD use the same engine, while the engine of the F-16 has a nearly identical one. Next comes the lift to drag ratio, which is a measure of the aerodynamic efficiency that specifies the penalty an aircraft pays in order to fly through the air. These numbers are classified, however for all modern aircraft, these numbers, especially those related to long endurance, are very similar. In fact, they are within 5% of each other. All these critical aerodynamic parameters are nearly identical, so how can the Tejas have only one third or one fourth of the endurance that the other two is claimed? Of course it isn't. The Tejas regularly flies non-stop between Bengaluru and Jodhpur and Bengaluru and Jaisalmer for various trials and exercises. For example, flying between Bengaluru and Jaisalmer with two 1,200-litre drop tanks, the aircraft lands with 800 kilos of fuel still on board wh while flying for two and a half hours. In fact, these flights are regularly done at 28,000 feet and instead of 35,000 feet, where endurance will be even greater. Taking all of these aspects into account, it's easy to see why the endurance of the Tejas is above 3 hours, pretty much like the other two. Now next. Tejas can carry half the weapons payload compared to the Gripen in the F-16, meaning twice the number of aircraft will need to be deployed in combat. First of all, the maximum payload of the Tejas is not 3 tons. Images 1 and 2 show the Tejas in standard strike configuration, where payloads are well over 3.5 tons. Occasionally, it's even been flight tested with more. Image 3 shows that they just after a flight test of 4.05 tons of payload. In-service aircraft will obviously fly without instrumentation in, in the limited series production and can therefore fly with up to 0.3 tons of extra payload capacity, which means that their max payload capacity is roughly 4.35 tons. Now how is payload ca capability calculated? Designers simply take off the maximum takeoff weight of the Tejas, which is about 14.1 tons, and subtract the clean takeoff weight with a full internal fuel and no payload of 4.98 tons from the former. This gives a payload capacity of approximately 4.3 tons. Now let's look at the claim made for the Gripen. Returning to today's reality, the clean maximum takeoff weights of the Gripen are 10 tons and 14 tons, respectively. Using Tejas-like calculations, the payload should be 4 tons, which is not that dissimilar. So how does the Gripen CD uh, advertise having a maximum payload of 5.3 tons, you may ask? This brings us to the magic of marketing, of which both DRDO and HAL are bereft. More on that another day though. The Gripen can take off with the 5.3 payload, but only if significant sacrifices on internal fuel carriage are made. But what good is such a configuration in operational services? Nothing, but it makes the brochures look good. The F-16, on the other hand, does have a higher payload than either of these two. That's a given though, considering that it's significantly larger. But with a payload of 7 tons, the F-16 what's becomes what is colloquially called a bomb truck. Its flying qualities degrade considerably at max payload, something which can be reasonably allowed only when conducting operations in permissive airspaces. The next erroneous statement is that the lifespan of the Tejas is 20 years, against 40 years for the Gripen in F-16. First of all, the lifespan of an aircraft isn't measured in years, but in flight hours. The most critical aspect on which the lifespan of a modern fighter aircraft depends is the durability of the engine that powers it. Over the course of its life, service life, a modern jet sing single engine fighter aircraft typically uses about three and a half engines. Once again, the Tejas employs the same engine as the Gripen CD, whose life is comparable, although slightly better, than the engine employed by the F-16. In terms of structure, the Tejas using contemporary manufacturing techniques employs one of the highest amounts of composite by weight. It's unclear how the same material and composites used by the Tejas are half as good as that of the Gripen or the F-16. The truth is that in-service fatigue life of the Tejas is yet to be ascertained. As per sources, an initial conservative estimate of 9,000 fly flying hours has been arrived at, 
Each of the in-service Tejas units are fitted with a health op monitoring system to measure airframe fatigue and come up with advised estimates for service life. By all indicators, this estimation of 9,000 hours is going to be up go upwards. This is nothing new though, the F-16 and Gripen lifespans also saw such divisions over the course of their time in service. When the F-16 first flew, the lifespan was estimated to be 6,000 hours, but was then revised upwards first to 8,000 hours and then 12,000 hours. One can expect a similar upward revision for the Tejas as well. The last fallacy is that the service time of the Tejas is 20 hours compared to 6 for the F-16 and 3.5 and for the Gripen. This is another allegation against the Tejas that doesn't stand up. During Aero India 2019, almost every Tejas aircraft reputed for flying executed over two to three sorties a day. The same was repeated during overseas air shows as well. Operationally, during the IAF's Iron Fist and Vayu Shakti exercises, participating Tejas aircrafts made three bomb runs a day. The availability of the aircraft in all these air shows and exercises has been it described as exceptional. Mind you, these aircrafts were all either test prototypes or just entering service. With time, their serviceability and availability will get better. In this context, another recent achie achievement of Team LCA must be emphasized, which is the Naval Avatar the design that recently became the first Indian design manufactured aircraft to land on an aircraft carrier. This is the first for Indian designers and Tejas maintainers, many of whom have never been on an aircraft carrier prior to the Air Force achievement. Yet for such a nascent program, both the employed test prototypes performed three takeoffs and landings during the course of their second day on board the ship itself. On the third day, one of the aircraft made three back-to-back -back sorties with hot refueling for a flight time of nearly three hours. These examples signify a flying tempo which is at par with any of other of the IAF's in-service aircraft types. Such an aircraft tempo cannot be maintained by a design whose serviceability is supposedly three to six times worse than its contemporaries. These uninformed attacks on the Tejas are nothing new. In fact, it's to be expected. The day before its first flight, the then Defence Minister George Fernandez got a letter saying, Please do not allow the first flight of the light combat aircraft to take place. The aircraft has not been developed with adequate rigour, and safety aspects have not been fully looked into. It would be a catastrophe if you allowed to fly. To his credit, Fernandez did not pay heed to the unsolicited advice and placed his trust in Team LCA instead. He did not tell anyone about the letter till after the first flight was complete and the aircraft was safely back on the ground. The rest, as they say, is history. The Tejas has been flying around for the last 20 years without a single accident. This is a rare, if not unprecedented, occurrence in military flight testing. We're standing at crossroads again. We can either make provision to accelerate and stabilize Tejas's production and reap the benefits of manufacturing at scale, or fall back on the tired old lure of license production and transfer of technology. On the Tejas's shoulders stand the coming of age of India's military aviation industrial complex. The time for being vocal about local is now. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and check out our channel for more videos just like this.